Hi everyone. Uh, myself, Anus Subedi from University of Quebec and Abitibi Temiskema. Today, I'll be presenting about my master project, which is about how increasing temperature makes black spurs more vulnerable to this spurs form. Uh, it's evident that boreal and temperate biome are prone to the large cycles of natural disturbances like fire, climate change, and um, other insect outbreaks. So in the Eastern Canadian uh, boreal forest, as you can see in the figure, Eastern spruce borum um, outbreak is the major natural disturbances. So what is spruce borum? So it is a lepidopteran moth. Uh, it completes its life cycle in 12 months and each of the stages are modulated by the climatic conditions. So when adult moth lays eggs in July and August, the second forms of the larva undergoes winter hibernation to avoid the extreme cold conditions. And as, uh, as soon as the temperature becomes warmer in the month of April and May, it tries to come out. And when there is ambient uh, climatic conditions, probably in the month of June, the Easter larval phase, uh, which we call the four to six Easter larva, does uh, voracious feedings on coniferous tree species uh, resulting in a condition which we call the defoliation. And at a certain time or during some period, when defoliation extends over larger regions because of the increasing population masses of Spursporum larva, it attains outbreak level. Uh, when you see the outbreak in Eastern Canada, now we can see the three uh, distinct outbreak that happened in the last century. So, and in the figure, we can see more recent outbreak that in red, uh, which is the outbreak that happened after 1965s is becoming more severe and shorter, affecting a large portion of the forest area. Uh, and it damaged a uh, major portion of the trees, including balsam for black spruce, white spruce, etc. And black spruce is also a host for it at secondary. However, because of its wide distribution range, it has become a good host. So in this zone, black spruce itself is affected by the climatic conditions or modulated by the climatic conditions. And its growth is also modulated by the um, insect disturbances of uh, spruce bottom. And, but how the, this growth of black spruce trees are modulated after the interaction of climate and spruce bottom deflation. So uh, we were trying to answer this question. So for this, uh, we aim to evaluate uh, the influence of climatic and outbreak severity on black spruce growth uh, during the outbreak that occurred in the last half centuries after 1960s. And uh, our specific questions was how increased temperature and precipitation of the previous uh, spring and summer fluctuate the current year growth of black spruce during an active deflation period of by spruce bottom because of its inter, uh, the interactive role between climate and the cumulative deflation. This is the uh, study area where you can see the distribution of our sites uh, in Quebec in different bioclimatic zones. So in each sites, we acquired dendrochronical data. And for this, we compiled 18 different dendrochronical projects that were conducted in Quebec for the last three decades. From there, we have around 2,300 growth trees, 2,300 black spruce trees uh, that were distributed across 164 sites. And from this, we summarized the growth rate into basal area increment to find the site level growth index. Secondly, we acquired the defoliation information from Ministry of Quebec, which had been conducting defoliation surveys since 1968 to categorize the level of defoliation into light, moderate, and severe. So from this, we had time series of outbreak severity from 1967 to 2017 to have the site level deflation intensity for each site for each year since 1967. Also for each of the sites, we use biosim to interpolate weather variables on daily basis. That's from 1951 to 2017. And we summarize these daily variables uh, into the, those variables which are important uh, uh, considerably in the stage of stage in biology of spruce forum as well as the black spruce and that involved the spring and summer temperature and precipitation. We also calculated the climate moisture index as the difference of precipitation and potential evapotranspiration. So after having site-specific dendrochronological data, deflation data, and 
um, and climatic data, we use two-step approach depending on the size of the data sets. In the first, we use generalized additive models to model the uh, log logarithm of basal area increment as a function of cumulative basal area and spline of age. And the residual here, uh, which contain the if, uh, information about the effect of uh, internal climatic variation and spread warm deflation, these residuals were used as a response for linear mixed effect models in second step, where we had the fixed effects of cumulative deflations, the standardized climatic variables, and their interactions with the random effects of site and year. So if you go into the results, here we can see the trend of basal area increment and cumulative deflation uh, since 1960s. Uh, what interesting here is uh, that the growth uh, reduction in black spurs happened exactly around the same period of time when the cumulative deflation reached its peak uh, in the Eastern Canada. So this is the results of our model where you can see the different climatic variables uh, or the predictors for our models with their estimated effect. Uh, since our response variable was in log scale, we will explain or interpret these variables in percentage scale. So what we found was uh, when there is severe deflation for an area or for an site uh, in a year, the growth of black spruce was reduced by 2.7 percentage uh, due to the effect of cumulative deflation. And this effect was uh, modulated by different climatic variables. Uh, if, uh, specifically, if you see the increase uh, in one standard deviation above mean for previous summer minimum temperature enhanced this deflation effect by 2.1 percentage. However, this effect was attenuated by 1.3 percentage uh, with the increase in previous summer maximum temperature. Just to make a visualization for one of our variable new temperature previous summer uh, with the interaction um, between cl climate and the cumulative deflation on the growth of black spurs. Here, if we see even for the same deflation level, the growth of black spurs was reduced with the increase in temperature of the previous summer. So we found that uh, cumulative deflation uh, reduced the growth, and this uh, uh, was uh, this effect was modulated by the interaction with climatic variables. So the increase uh, summer minimum temperature might have created a favorable environment for the earlier emergence of spruce bottom larva from winter hibernation period, and on the tree level, uh, it uh, helped the spruce black spruce to to break the bud earlier. Uh, uh, that led to suitable feeding condition for spruce bottom larva, which increased the deflation over over a long run in a consecutive years that uh, resulted in growth reduction. However, uh, too hot temperature or too hot summer temperature were detrimental, might have been detrimental for the survival of spruce bottom larva. This is because uh, the, the larva of spruce bottom, they need to uh, counterbalance the energy which is lost by the increasing temperature. So since this is this was this might have been the case, uh, we we observed some growth release on the rings of black spruce. So this over a long run or a consecutive years resulted in the uh, uh, limited the deflation but increased the growth of black spruce. So for the moisture and precipitation value, it was favor for the growth of black spruce. But when there is an active deflation from spruce bottom. Uh, it favored more for the survivability of early star larva. And on the other hand, uh, some studies suggest that suitable precipitation or moisture index uh, help the spruce bottom uh, to spread in the newer locations uh, to, to enhance their uh, spreading success. So this led their success uh, of uh, relocating in a newer location in a consecutive years that increased the deflation, causing a growth reduction in black spurs. Thus, we uh, from our study we found that uh, different climatic variables uh, for spring and summer season, uh, including climate, moisture, and temperature, regulated the growth of black spurs. And there was uh, some significant interaction with the cumulative deflations. Uh, among all, uh, there was a high interference of summer season climate on the interactions of cumulative deflation and the climate on the growth of black spurs. 
Uh, more specifically, the increased uh, summer minimum uh, made the black spruce vulnerable to the deflation because it enhanced the deflation activity. Thus, uh, the positive effect that uh, some trees in the boreal landscape ha um, might have to the increasing temperature might be attenuated or reversed uh, when there is increased synchronization between the spruce bottom emergence from the la larval phase and the bud break in black spruce. So that's it. I would like to thank everyone who helped for this project and all the funding agencies. And thank you for your attention as well. Thank you. Thank you, Anuj. Is there any questions? Yeah, Igor. Um, I have a question of statistical nature. Okay. Can you hear me well, right? Am I yeah, I, I can hear you. Uh, um, I saw Philip Marchand was part of the team, so I, I believe that probably speaks volumes about the quality of the statistical setup, but still, I wonder, uh, how did it treat the fact that there was a high autocorrelation in the temperature? Because you basically show that there was a major impact of temperature on the whole thing, though the temperature is really a regional phenomenon. phenomenon. So like if you go on one side, then go on another side, even 10 kilometers, or maybe even 50 kilometers, or maybe even 100 kilometers, you will still have basically the same observation, right? The same temperature, so it's not independent. So how this has been addressed? Uh, you mean the correlation with the temperature, if I can hear you very well? No, that's why I asked you to hear me well from the beginning. <laughs> uh, I um, Like if you have two sites and they are close to each other, relatively okay. close to each other, okay. right? Yeah. So, and you study the fact of original climate forcing the temperature, right? Okay. You take these two sites and you would love to consider them as independent observations. Okay. So they are not, because if you look at the temperature effect, they mm -hmm. are under the same climate, so to say, right? And mm -hmm. same variability you pick up with a pretty large area. So you had quite few deflations that you showed very nice picture at the beginning, probably we're talking about two deflations, which you can actually capture with your children record. So you have two in terms of replicas, but in terms of the sites, you had mm -hmm. probably not as much as you showed in your um, like pitch of sites, which you like have like across the whole. Okay. So can you comment on this? Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, but for this, like uh, we had the sites uh, pretty like do, uh, almost around 20 kilometers away from each of the sites and for, for the climatic data, and we we use uh, biasing with, uh, with uh, which we like, uh, it's more accurate in the distinguishing the temperatures between different sites in our study. So I think uh, uh, re relying on this information of the temperature data, I think uh, even though there are like similar uh, effects from the from like climatic data, like temperature or precipitation between the sites which are pretty uh, near, I think this uh, will explain uh, differentiation in the growth. That's why uh, further like some of the sites uh, which are like less than uh, more than 20 kilometers, we didn't merge them into one. So basically we have like uh, different sites. So I think this, uh, this can explain those variations. Well, it, it doesn't really answer my question. You have, uh, sorry, you have uh, probably have to do the trending of your data, right? So you can compare your sites in the like overall design, right? Yeah. So, we're not talking about absolute differences. So we are always talking about relative differences. So if you're looking at the relative differences, you have to make certain that you have like sufficient variability in climate among sites, right? But they are still put in the same region, so to say, and you don't have a lot of replication in terms of outbreaks. Yeah. But again, yeah. no stress, I just... just yeah, uh, for this, for the detailing part, uh, like uh, we uh, we use the GAM models and we thought we did, we model with the cumulative area uh, like basal area with this plan of years and I think this removes most of the like tree related tree related effects for each of our sites so I guess uh, this explains a little bit about uh, the variations. Okay, thank you. Oh.
Thanks a lot, Anush. Thank you.